guys, you guys have heard me talk all the time. You need to hear me. We have some very, very special guests today. And I want you to know that we're very excited about Curiosity. We're very excited about Bill Nye, the science guy. And Noogie Wills. Good job. But first, I want to introduce my boss. She is the most powerful woman in the space business. The most powerful woman in the universe. I give it up for Deputy Administrator, Lori Garber. continuing that exploration spirit that we uh, all know and love. We love it here at Kennedy Space Center. We love it across the country and around the world. We are great explorers. We are an exploring species. And just imagine as you're launching, uh, watching the launch this morning, if you could have been there when Lewis and Clark were first venturing out across the country. We have the technology now through all of you so that the whole world can experience this beginning of exploration as we launch the Mars Science Lab with its amazing Curiosity rover. And what about Curiosity is very similar to that discovery for on the Lewis and Clark mission is the whole world is interested in our results and what we are doing. And helping us explain what we're doing and inspire that next generation of explorers is our next guest. We are so happy to have him here to join in the launch to help communicate the inspiring message of science and technology, discovery and curiosity. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Will I Am. No chef bones. No chef bones. <laughs> How you guys doing? That's pretty. You guys, that was pretty awesome. Right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, so it's it's an honor to be here. Um, I always dreamt of coming and seeing a rocket leave the planet. Um, most people are probably wondering what I'm doing here. But earlier this year, I had a TV program on ABC called uh, Science is Rock and Roll. I am first. You guys see that? And uh, I partnered up with Team Cayman. Um, Cause I'm, he's like a hero to me. And his program, US First, teaching kids STEM education and having them compete, building robots, just blew my mind away to see this community of, of young kids from the ages nine to 15, 18, doing amazing things with, you know, computers, writing code and building robots. So I told him I wanted to help out and spread the word and ask him if I could help him make it a TV program. And he said, there's no way it's going to be on network television. They don't think science and robotics is cool enough. So I said, you know, maybe you guys have the wrong people doing it. <laughs> so... But what I realize is, when it comes to science and popular culture, most people think it isn't cool. So I said, you know, how much does it cost to buy the time myself? So I bought the time from ABC and did a TV program. And that was... <laughs> the only time you have to take risks, you have to do things that are out of the norm to do things that are out of the norm. <laughs> So I did that and uh, got all my peers and all my friends to, you know, shine a light on why they feel science is important. Um, I, and what, what made me want to do it is I saw this TV program called uh, Waiting for Superman. Um, yeah. And my mom, yeah. she went to that high school. And I, I was supposed to go to that high school, but I got busted out to Brentwood Science Magnet. And that, those schools, changed my life. And uh, that movie haunted me because it was waiting for a guy with tights to change the, you know, waiting for Superman. Superman ain't showing up. He got on tights. 
So, <laughs> so I wanted to change my, my community. So I asked Dean Kamen, what would it take to have a U.S. first robotics program in Royal Heights, where I'm from? And just because U.S. first robotics is in Royal Heights doesn't mean the kids are going to want to do it. So I said, well, I have to make this cool. So I did a TV program, and that, that's what got the emotion, right? Yeah. Bring the emotion to get the kids excited. And that's where I, that's where I got the call from. I'm used to that on stage. <laughs> um, that's when I got a call from uh, Charlie Golden. I was like, wow. Gene Kane was like, well, the fellow by the name of Charlie Golden is going to call you on the phone. So I was talking to him. He said, you know, we would really like to put your mind um, on how to continue to promote STEM education. So then he hooked me up with Leland. And Leland and I were, were, were talking. And Lars introduces to Lars. Come on, Lars. And we've been on this mission um, and uh, came up with this program called SYSTEM, which stands for Stimulating Youth Throughout Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Because STEM, it sounds cool, but that's not really a cool word, you know, STEM? <laughs> but SYSTEM, the new system to, to get this whole new youth, this movement, to take what's happening in U.S. first and amplify it and grow it and make it even bigger. Um, in America, that, that is a new system, bringing those programs in the inner cities in areas like Palisades, which it isn't a ghetto, but doesn't have a robotics program in Palisades. So in my in my, in the way I look at it, it is a ghetto because it's lacking uh, programs that are, take youth and take American culture to a totally different level. So Palisades needs system, Compton needs system, East LA needs system, Americans, youth, we need a new system, and that's what that is. Um, so, yep, that's what I'm doing here. Did you put together a song or something? So then I wrote this song called, uh, it's called Reach for the Stars. And uh, I came up with these kooky ideas of how to get it out. Um, and then ran into some some uh, thingies, but what, uh, what that means is um, my ideas could happen. But we are going to release the song when the when the when the rover lands on Mars. Uh, the song's going to be released. Um, it's called "Reach for the Stars." I have this kids' choir and uh, this 25-piece orchestra um, trying to. You know, I didn't want to put like computer beat with auto tune. I don't want to do that. I wanted to have like human collaboration and, and uh, just, I'm so proud to, to have put together this, this huge orchestra with these kids. It's, it's amazing. I wish I could play right now, but I have to, when, when the rover lands, it's going to come out. Oh, some of the lyrics. Um, one of the lyrics of the song goes, um, I'll say the lyrics. <laughs> Because it doesn't sound right. You know, it's a choir. I can't really choir with my voice. Um, but it's, uh, I know you say the sky's the limit. No, I'm sorry. Why do they say the sky's the limit when I've seen footprints on the moon? I know the sky might be high, but maybe it ain't really that high. And I know that Mars might be far, but maybe it ain't really that far. Let's reach for the stars. So it, when, a, when a group of children sing that, shows you that the sky is not the limit. Stop saying that. You're lying to them when you say sky is the limit. You know, let's reach for the stars, the light, the energy, and um, connectivity. Let's keep moving forward past the things that we've already accomplished. So that's what that song's about, and I'm proud to leave the it. And when, it, when the rover lands on Mars, I, I can't wait for that song to be released. You know, you think about you know, STEM and all that. We also think about the arts and the music and how this is just one continuum, how we bring all these different things together. So you have a kid who's interested in being a, a musician, but there's math and music. If you know math, you know music and vice versa. So how can you tweet about getting the, the 
artist, one of these, and a dancer, one of these, and the people that don't even, even know how to spell STEM, to think about what's embedded in the music, what's embedded in the art, and to get those things out there in the sort of works to help them get inspired and motivated. Yeah, and the, you know, the arts, when science and art is married, we create wonderful things. The industry that I'm in, Without science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, we would have no music industry. Without people like Nikola Tesla, there would be no radio. Without, you know, RCA, you know, created NTSC, there would be no television. So, moving forward, STEM, you need arts. The next team for science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So, uh, that's what's going to help amplify STEM, is, is the arts. And that's Steve. And that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> so NASA is all about having uh, each of you be able to communicate this message uh, to your followers. We're going to open it up to questions for any of us. And on to Mars. Uh, Leland, are you our MC? Take some questions. Um, you know, Lars Burton has developed Picasso. I don't know if you guys have used Picasso. Well, he's part of this this team, this system, and uh, he's helping us help change the world. So I see this guy over here. Now we'll take some questions from the audience. You want to have questions over here? Chef, do you have another mic or this up? I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this. <laughs> Uh, yes, my question is for Lori, actually, um, or anyone can answer. Actually, how do you feel about commercialized space flight? <laughs> well, <laughs> how long do you have? <laughs> In this great country of ours, we are a capitalist nation, and 85% of NASA dollars have gone out to the private sector doing commercial space flight since the beginning of NASA. We are teamed with the best industry partners in the world, and we are so proud to team with them in new ways that it's going to give us the very best return on that tax dollar. That is going to employ more and more of the youth that are going to be inspired by Will I Am and these songs in order to enter this field. We are going to discover new things to do in space that are so creative because this isn't going to be just Uncle Sam and the uh, public sector. But we are the cutting edge. We are the ones who are exploring beyond and we look forward to teaming with our industry partners to go with us, to help us lead, and then ultimately to open up new markets as they innovate and then we really will be able to win that people. Awesome. Who the All right, any other questions? So I was out here for a shuttle launch, and this press site is full of people. And this rocket is just as cool, and this vehicle going to Mars is just as cool. What can we do to get the word out, right? I mean, just be on Twitter, how do we get the world engaged in seeing how awesome this is? Good question. I'd say go and mentor a kid. You know, we have first robotics who we're working with. We need mentors, we need people that will build things with these students and, and get them engaged and start thinking about how to create things, how to be innovative. Um, go into a school, help a teacher. I mean, you have your technological savvy, go help a teacher that doesn't understand the technology and how to you know, push that down to their students. So I think just being a volunteer, helping, you know, web, the web stuff too, but you know, you got to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with people. I would also add that, I, so I was a little late because I was over at the other building, the uh, VIPs, including several members of Congress, your elected representatives, and since NASA does these tax dollars, you can obviously uh, help with uh, having the leadership of the country recognize all the valuable things we are doing in space and support that. You can do that through uh, the schools, as Leland mentioned, your communities, and anything, any talent that you Brain. You know, this is what's exciting about this partnership. People all have different talents. I have a couple teenage boys. One's more uh, focused on science and one, one is a music major in, in college. And they really care about space. My son is writing a musical about uh, the uh, challenger and the 
incredible stories of those great explorers. There are great explorations going on at NASA. Each of you bring your talents to this. That's what we love about this new uh, way of communicating, and that is what is, I think, going to help us lead the next frontier. Also, um, you know, we have to help educate popular culture um, to remember where these, these tools come from. Um, if it wasn't for NASA research, we wouldn't have any of these laptops, any of these smartphones. Um, I wouldn't be able to make music on computers and share them around the world on computers if it wasn't for the research that NASA did. Um, and popular culture just to be reminded about that. And like you said, this is cool. We just, we don't do it, we don't treat it like it's cool enough. Um, and that's, that's our arrow. <laughs> Thank you, another question. How many teachers do we have in here? <laughs> Educators, we love you. How do you continue today? I am a teacher. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'd like to ask you, what do you think is the number one thing a teacher can do to inspire students? Uh, encourage students. Um, each, each, each student is different, and, and they probably have a different thing they want to accomplish, but encouraging them that they can accomplish anything that is that's in their mind um, can help a child go really, really far in life. I was encouraged by Mr. Wright, Ms. Montez, Mr. Marshall, these are the people in my life from 6th grade to 10th grade to 12th grade that, that gave me the confidence to do what I do, um, as well as people that, that, that I went to school with like um, Amy Smart and Pascal. We were all encouraged growing up in school, so I would, I would uh, encourage the kids. I had a, had a guidance counselor that told me that I should go and be a diesel truck mechanic, and I was taking calculus in high school, and I just didn't understand where that connection came. So if I had listened to that guidance counselor, who knows where I would have been, but we have to have tell the kids they can do anything they want to. Really? Yeah, kind I of just segue right, yeah. right into the question I have. What was that defining moment for, for you, for, for Will, for Laurie, that you knew you wanted to go into this field? And what was that, that real inspirational moment where you know, the light bulb went off and it's like, very crystal clear, this is where I want to go? For me, it was a chemistry set. My mother gave it to me. I blew up a hole in her carpet. <laughs> it was incredible. I mean, this incredible explosion. And I feel my curiosity became a chemistry major. So it's the hands-on experiential things, building, creating, innovating, working with your hands, working with others, working in teams and groups. That's what we do here. That's how we build rockets. That's how we go to space, work as this team And uh, that's what we did for me. Maybe you should say. Thanks for having I just, I just want to add this one thing to the teacher. The key, I think, is what was your, you, everybody had a favorite teacher, right? So, Will, sounds like you had a favorite. Mr. Ray, Ms. Montez, and Mr. Marshall. I had uh, uh, Mr. Flowers, Mr. Uh, Lawrence, Ms. Russia, and of course, Mr. Light. But, uh, uh, but the, uh, what I would say to all teachers is share your passion. It's your passion. If you're excited about it, the student will get excited about it. All these guys, like, you just can't wait to blow things up, right? Yeah, they're <laughs> very and uh, it's a So it's your passion that will sell the idea. But look, I just want to say to everybody, uh, everybody's lamenting, you know, we have to get kids excited, we have to show them something. Science is cool! Yeah. Just, just, just share. Look at us, you guys came from all over the country, some of you all over the world, just to tweet. <laughs> so excited, we're all gone. So Bill, I have to tell you this, my 19 year old son, he's and uh, I'm sorry, I hope you don't sue him, his name, uh, Bill Nye Science Guys. Is that okay? <laughs>
I was wondering what you guys think if this may be the one reward uh, those of us in other industries uh, can do uh, to work with you guys more. Of an industry that don't necessarily have much to do with aerospace models. I work in entertainment, so in my industry might work a little better, but I have other you know, friends and family members and maybe people here might not necessarily sure work that close. Okay, I think the main thing is just as I said before, you know, you can go out and interact with the kid, the teacher, whatever industry you're in, show that STEM is in that industry. I mean, everything we do, there's science and technology in it. And as long as we can make the connection with them and let them see it, I, you know, I pick up this smartphone. Most people are users of a smartphone. They don't know how to develop an app. If you, if you download the app kit for 100 bucks from Apple, you can create an app, and if you sell a million of those, you're now a millionaire. Not an asking app, you're now a millionaire. So let them start to think about entrepreneurs. Kickstarter. You talked about Kickstarter, right? Yeah, so there's these communities online where these young developers, or the designers, code writers, um, they're building things, and, and the community pays for them um, rather than going to a venture capitalist. So there's a whole bunch of things that we could do as a as a community to help grow STEM with the help of the arts, whether that's fashion, music, design, they, they need to go hand in hand. Um, also, you know, there's programs, I remember they wanted me to do Boy Scouts, and the Girl Scouts passed out Girl Scout cookies. When it comes to STEM, what is the what is STEM's version of Boy Scouts? What is STEM's version of Girl Scouts? We need to come up with that because we don't have that right now. U.S. First has it, but what are other versions of that where we're teaching the skill set to kids and kids are competing and it's fun and there's camps and they go for the summer and they're learning about science and learning about engineering. We need to come up with those things as a community. Okay, so let me just give my non-scientist response because I'm not a scientist or engineer. I study political science and economics. I love to say, especially when I'm with Leland at schools, you can study science and math and grow up to be an astronaut like Leland, or you can study political science and grow up to work with Congress. Very inspiring for staff. Very inspiring for staff. Well, you could you you study computer science and be like Sergey and Larry and. Exactly. Exactly. So my point is that it's all about the people. It isn't the technology. And I think we can all do a better job telling the stories of the people who are involved. And the data that we get is used by people in many different fields. Farmers across the country use our data from space. Uh, they're working in the, in the vineyards to know when to be able to pick the grapes because of our studies from space. We know when to tell people in Africa to put up their uh, nets to keep them from getting malaria because of the information we have from space. These are the stories. And to me, people are no different growing up today than they were in my generation. We wanted to make a difference. NASA was making a difference in the 1960s. We were the very embodiment of the United States leading the technology effort, which has given us all the tools that we have today that we've been talking about. We helped win the Cold War. We're now, we are on the cutting edge working on the International Space Station peacefully with not only the Russians, but 13 other nations. We are working to make sure that the lifestyle of everyone on this planet is better in the future. How is there an industry that isn't involved in that? Every industry is involved in that. Every person on this planet would love to make a contribution to that effort. And that's what we're trying to do with the system. I just want to correct for the record. I didn't develop a house I put together a creative team to, uh, to do the coding and put together a business. Uh, but I've never, ever met anything like the creative energy that this guy standing next to me has. <laughs> so he came up on the spot and his name is Susa. The system says technology, engineering, math, but we agree. It's, at the end, it could be music, and the E could be education. It's uh, we're a we're, we're small group of people trying to do something unreasonable. And somebody asks what you can do, you can blog about it. This is the new world. It's the new system. It's not the old system anymore. We're going to preach from on high what we can do. It's you guys can make the difference. So you can start blogging with the hashtag system. 
you can encourage people to go to makethesystem.com and register. There's going to be updates. It's cross-disciplinary. It's not just technology. It's artists. It's people in entertainment. It's everyone trying to build that all together to, to reach the ultimate goal that, that inspires kids. And you know what that is that inspires kids? Curiosity. The other thing is, when you empower a kid, you know, they don't have to think about the traditional school system to get their education. I mean, there are people like, you know, Salman Khan from Khan Academy, where you can learn through vector calculus and history of physics online at your own pace. So, you need to look at all the different ways that kids can learn. And it's not just in school, it's outside of school. It's building, it's developing, it's growing, it's first robotics, it's playing music, it's creating, it's doing all these things. So empowering them to take charge of their education and their life. That's what we're trying to do here. All right. Will, you want to wrap it up? People want to ask questions. Another question. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. How can we help Congress understand the work that all of you are trying to do? Yeah. 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 critical uh, vote. We have uh, obviously at NASA in particular a very exciting program. We have uh, just received our budget in fact for 2012 so Congress did a good job this year. They didn't give us all that the President asked for. The President uh, was very supportive of NASA asking for over 18 and a half billion dollars. We got about 17.8 billion dollars but we can have the best space program on the planet for that and when all of your help we intend to. And um, last is enabling the youth to become the Larrys and the Sergeys and the, the Jack Dorseys and the Biz Hills. The day, I give it two years, Black Friday, a 15 year old that came from US First as a product that they came up with turning the 15 year old into an entrepreneur. Two years from now, you're going to rush to the store and your little seven year old niece or son or cousin is going to want a product that came from the 15 year old that's part of US First. Whether it's a robot, an application, a computer, a smartphone, or some type of device around technology, that's when you see a change. That's when Congress, whatever, you just have industry. We can wait, we can point fingers, or we can do what we can to push this new system to, to work on its own. Because Google didn't need Congress, Twitter didn't need Congress, Facebook didn't need Congress, Microsoft didn't need Congress, Apple didn't need Congress, and all these products that are sold are recession proof. We all rush to get a new iPhone, a new MacBook, and stand in line on Black Friday in a recession. It's industry that's going to change and enabling the people that believe to bring things to culture, to side, yes. and make their lives easier, and it's going to come from me. Great. Amen. Amen. All right. Good night.